be the two boxers who will square off for championship gold in the 81 kilogram light heavyweight division. Just six boxers started the 81 kilogram light heavyweight tournament bracket. Time skilled, coordinated athletes up at 81 kilograms, quite rare. But that is exactly what Busra Isildar is, because my goodness, what a punch, uh, a, a punch output this woman puts forward here at this heavier 81 kilogram weight class. She was 19 years of age during the tournament. She comes to the boxing ring as the 2020 European Youth Championship gold medalist at 81 kilograms plus heavyweight. She took two national youth titles at plus 81 kilograms in 2020 and 2019. She was a dominant junior as well, and she has been absolutely sensational during the course of this tournament. It's her third bout in the final. In this weight class, which has only six boxers, she received effectively boxed in the quarter-final stage. And my goodness, the contest she had with Poland's Martina Jancelowicz was absolutely incredible. Non-stop punching, plenty of ring grabs, and that is how she arrived here in the gold medal bout on a 5-0 unanimous points decision victory. Mark Stenia. Oliferenko, 18 years of age, and she too comes to the boxing ring as a 2020 European Youth Championship gold medalist. Whereas Isildar took it at 81 kilogram plus heavyweight. Oliferenko took it at 81 kilogram light heavyweight. So this, a battle of 2020 European Championship gold medalists here on the global stage and unsurprisingly, given her success in the continental region, she's a dominant figure on her domestic scene, taking national titles in 2020 and 2019 in the youth classification at 81 kilograms and 81 kilogram plus. We've got judges from Kazakhstan, Sri Lanka, Guatemala, Malaysia, and the United States of America judging this, our penultimate bout. So there is Busra Isildar of Turkey. And look at that, giving flowers to a rival. And how about that for a wonderful touch of sportsmanship here on the global stage. And that is why it's being applauded by the locals in attendance here and indeed the support teams of the athletes who are making their way out into some of the seats at the Halalegianov. So beautiful touch. Again, even though it's championship gold on the line, it's being conducted in a wonderful spirit all tournament long. So Mukash, yes, Aliyev of Kyrgyzstan issuing the final instructions and hold on to your hats because Isildar throws punches from the opening belt. Her semi-final, but well, we'll get back to that in a minute because this gold medal bout is underway. Boxers from Turkey and Russia squaring off to contest 81 kilogram light heavyweight gold here in Kyoto 2021. A taller figure wearing red who's looking to get to work with a left jab is Busra Isildar. Terrific boxer, capable of going over a front foot and being the aggressor or boxing from distance and range. But what is notable about her work is that when she elects to go through the gears, the punches come in bunches and she possesses wonderful accuracy and variety. Ksenia Oliferenko was a unanimous points decision winner in her only bout of Kyoto 2021 at her semi-final stage, having had a bye in what was effectively the quarter-final with only six boxes making up this bracket. And she was a 4-1 split decision winner over Asil Sagatova of Kazakhstan. So a minute gone in this opening round. Isildar looking to long bridge her opponent with that long left hand. Steps in with the jab and came forward with a flurry. And the final left hand did land in, land in slapping fashion. 
has that habit of pounding her gloves together when she's beyond punching range. And what a right cross, my goodness. Didn't bother to set it up with the lead left hand. And it came through sharp and crisp and strong and landed right onto the chin of Oli Ferenko. Terrific punch picking as we approach the midpoint of this opening round. Same shot once again, followed up by a left hook from Isildar. So the punch output lower than we've associated with her through the course of this tournament so far, but my goodness, the shots that she has landed have been heavy and accurate and eye-catching. Oliferenko trying to get her own offense away. Sildar just not committing to that backhand on that occasion. It came back via the belt line. She may want to tighten up the trajectory of that punch and get it back to the on-guard position more efficiently. Right hand landed on the inside from Oliferenko. So inside the final minute of the opening round, Oliferenko, lovely rhythmic boxer, but she walks into a left jab there. You can see her bobbing and weaving, trying to get her own offense together. But she's been beaten to the punch. Punch output of the woman in red has been higher, and she's been more accurate as well. It's another trade-off at center ring. Stop! Now, Andy's mentioned during the course of his commentary that we've had points taken off for holding during the course of Kielsa 2019. And an observation is that Mr. Isaliev from Kyrgyzstan does tend to take points rather quickly just to set the tenor of contest that he wants to take place in the boxing ring. So the boxers will have to watch how they conduct themselves and they won't want to pick up a warning here in this gold medal bout. But for my money, it's the woman in red who's taken that opening round courtesy of some more effective punch picking. Absolutely, and I'm not surprised to see a 10-8 in the middle there. I think if Oliferenko didn't have quite such a good chin, we would have seen some more 10-8s because she got hit by some clean, real hard right hands there, and she just managed to just eat them up without really blinking. But Isildar punches hard, she's accurate, and you don't get the impression that she's really loading up, particularly when, when she throws her punches. So I think she could do this for three rounds. I'm not sure if Oliferenko could take it for three rounds. I think we might we might get a we might get a, a stoppage here within within the distance because as I say the Russian has got got a very, very solid chin. That, that's a very good first round for Sildar. I'm not seeing much of a press. So we're into the second round then. Oh, that's a jolting left jab, and then another roundhouse left from Isildar to start this second round. Oliferenko, you can see she's trying to engage a higher punch output up on her toes, more busy with her hands. But when she tries to step into her own punching range, she did land a solid left hand during the course of that coming together, and another left hand as well from Oliferenko. So Oliferenko, perhaps after conceding the opening round, realizing that she's not going to win a boxing match at range, electing to step into the pocket and engage in trades. Fighting fire with fire. Because at this type of distance, well, Isildar appeared to be the boss, but what a right cross in response from Oliferenko. He just kept on coming. As though it was on a telescopic arm, and look at the trade-off at center ring once again as both boxers crashing home, bent arm shots, hooks around the corner for both of the championship contenders here. And Oliferenko, credit to her, because after conceding the opening round for all five scoring judges, she has come out and quickened her work rate and increased her punch output. Really going for it, shaping up nicely beyond punching range, slipping from side to side before stepping into the pocket and looking for her successes. So approaching the midpoint of the second round. Right hand left landed on a break from Isildan and she landed with a glancing left. And Oliferenko, is she feeling the pace after that quicker start to the second half of this round? Can she keep this going? Isildar, as Andy mentioned, gives the impression that she can do this for 15 rounds if necessary. She's the boxer continuing to pound her gloves together, looking for her own range. The boxer's loading up with backhands, neither one finding the mark. 
minutes or a minute to go, and it's another ferocious trade-off in the middle of the boxing ring. The jab hasn't been much in evidence over the past minute or so. It's all been digging the feet into the canvas and uncoiling hooks. So Oliferenko waiting, and as she was waiting, she just presented a static target, and her left right was speared out by Isildar, that was right on the money. Isildar inviting pressure by going onto the ropes, but Oliferenko just wary of falling into that trap. She does land with a good left jab, but look at that, when Isildar's allowed to trigger the attack, she gets through with a stronger, cleaner, straighter punch. Oliferenko's best work in this round has been when she's exchanging and engaging. Now, it's a risky business, of course, against a puncher like Isildar, but when she's elected to remain at distance and try and box at long range, for my money, she's come out second best in this contest, but when she's the aggressor, when she's willing to trade off, well, she has her successes. Much better second round for Oli Ferenko. Not sure it's going to be enough to take it, though. No, it's not. It's not going to be enough. And, and Isildar's got it 10-9 on, on all of the cards there. So two-point advantage on four cards, a three-point advantage with Emerson Pastor in the in the middle there from Guatemala. And I'm full of admiration for Oliferenko because she just does have an absolutely granite chin. And you can see how she would beat the vast, vast, vast majority of people. Well, everyone, because she's got to a world final, other than the, the woman in front of her, because she just walks you down, walks you down, walks you down. And she'll be able to walk through other fighters that she can't walk through Isildar, that she's having to dig her toes in and give her everything she's got in to, to keep her off. I mean, it's it's uh, it's an impressive display of a very solid punching from Isildar, but I'm just in awe of, of Oliver Ranko's chin, to be honest with you. Well, as we go into the third and final round, Beautiful left, right landed from Isildar once again, and there's the same shot, almost an instant replay in the first 20 seconds of this second round. Left, right, left, right, and the right hand landed solidly each time. Now up at 81 kilograms, light heavyweight, these boxers possess the power to turn things around in a hurry. And I really think that is what Oliferenko is going to need to do. Well, it's all very well for the referee to say that they've got to let their hands go more. But these shots are solid indeed, and Oliferenko has taken plenty of them. And again, she's backed up by that telescopic right cross that Isildar possesses. It really is an invidious endeavour that she's undergoing here, because Oliferenko... Oh, that's a nice left uppercut she walked in with, but she took a right hand on the retreat, did Oliferenko. But her only chance, it seems to me, is to engage Isildar in a fight. And I mentioned the variety that Isildar has in her boxing tool bag. Well, she's capable of engaging in one of those as well. Her chin is solid, her punches are heavy. And so Oliferenko facing a really difficult task to overturn the 2018 deficit for four of the five judges and the 2017 deficit she faces for Judge C halfway through the final round and again the longer the deeper we go into the round the more and more we're entering the realm of Oliferenko needing a knockout she's just taken a flashing left hook solid on her chin once again and she remains in the pocket but the punch success from both flanks has dislodged the mouthpiece and I think it's actually the exertions of Isildar that blew her own mouthpiece out well, let's give Oliferenko credit because it was her right hand during the course of that exchange which dislodged the gum shield of the woman in red. So the referee following the COVID-19 safety protocols under which Kielsa 2021 is being conducted, he has to sanitize his hands before he can issue the command of box. And look at the trading once again as the two boxes come together for another hard-hitting exchange. And Oli Ferenko coming out second best just about every time. She does have her own successes when she's letting her hands go. But my goodness, it's been a very good performance from Isildar. Keeping her composure, keeping her shape. And how about that? Here up at 81 kilograms, demonstrating good footwork and effective movement from the waist as well. To make Oli Ferenko continue to fall short as another pile-driving right cross crashes home for Isildar.
How on earth is Olifarenko remaining on her feet and remaining in the contest, given the punches she has shipped over the course of this gold medal bout? She is plenty tough. What a competitor. But short of finding a single shot finish here, she's going to come away with a world championship silver. But my goodness, she's got something which you cannot teach, and that is resolve and determination and an incredible punch resistance. Isildar high fives with her team, and again, body language often so instructive in the immediate aftermath of a contest. They know, she knows, that she is the world champion, adding to the continental success that she earned up in the 81 kilogram plus heavyweight division. What a display! What a competitor Olimparenko is. Absolutely. Tremendous performance out from Isilvar. Great punch variety. And she caught the clean so many times. And as I said, you have to take the hat off to Olimparenko and the way she stuck at it for her ability to soak those punches up. But, but long term, she's got to start moving her head because there's not, a, there's not a great deal of longevity in fighting like that, even with the even with the head guards on. I don't want to be too critical. So it is she's given us everything there, but it's all about day. Well, lovely to see that show of respect between the two boxers, but this day belongs to Busra Isildar. The woman from Turkey is the 81 kilogram light heavyweight world youth champion. Having produced a blistering series of performances